What are you doing in life, what you're doing? I don't like to see injustice. I don't like to see violence. You know, I, I find that deeply annoying uh, when powerful people lie to cause injustice to people who are less powerful. It, that revolts my basic sense of fairness. And so I'm in a, a fortunate position where I can do something about that uh, at a global level. Another side of, of the coin is that you have been a hacker. Why? I was a hacker as a teenager before the internet uh, was available to people. It was only available to the military and uh, research groups in universities. So if, as a young, uh, curious man who wanted to understand the world, who wanted to understand how these big institutions work, well, of course, you, go, you go out. Um, Austra Australia is where I grew up, is, has a, a fairly nice culture um, about decency and respect for people, but it's an island. So um, you have to explore if you want to understand the world. What is the impact that internet, social media, and the social movements are having in, in the new world, in the new era that we are living? Okay, so there's rival, uh, two rivalrous possibilities. Mm. Um, one possibility is that the connecting up of everyone, uh, their inner desires. For example, uh, when you search on Google for something, Google records it permanently. Google's based in the United States. Uh, Google knows you better than you know yourself. Mm. Do, do you remember what you were searching for two days, three hours ago? Mm. Google does. It remembers. It, rem it knows you better than your mother. What that information goes to? Well, so that's stored permanently by Google, but also it is intercepted by the National Security Agency as it goes to the United States. People in Latin America may not realize this, but the, the United States' geographical position is one of the things that has given its intelligence agencies such power. All communications flows to Europe, to Asia, from Latin America, pass through the United States, where they are intercepted by the National Security Agency. And the, the new game in interception is not anymore to go, ah, uh, is he an interesting guy? I just saw he made an email here that he looked at a website there that he tried to telephone his mo mother in Madrid. No. The new game in interception is you just record everything. It's cheaper. You just record everything coming out of Latin America going through the US and store it. And then, if in a couple of years you become interesting to US intelligence or their pals, uh, then they go, okay, let's look what he was doing two years ago, let's look what he was doing one year ago, let's look to see who his friends are, who he's communicating with. And there, um, this is not speculation. There are uh, companies across the world that sell the equipment to do this and who have um, marketing guides for the intelligence agencies. This is what our equipment will do, this is how much it costs, you can intercept everything, you don't have to worry about finding which person you're interested in. Just intercept it all and store it all. Uh, and we published these earlier this year, uh, called the Spy Files. Over we mean in Wikileaks. Wikileaks published them. Over 170 um, companies uh, that provide the intelligence sector uh, with this ability to bulk spy the entire population. Communications flows going through an entire country. Everything out. Every telephone call out of a country. Store it permanently. Don't bother deleting it. So that's the dark aspect of the internet. As, as we have moved more of our private lives onto the internet, um, our plans, our timetables, our emails, all those things that perhaps would have been kept in our homes once will be done face to face. We have given it all to intelligence agencies, every goddamn thing. And some in, uh, countries are better able to intercept that because they have greater technological prowess and they have a history of doing this or their geographical position permits them to do it. Um, on the other hand, uh, we also have the ability to make alliances much faster, uh, to make our plans much faster with, with one another. Uh, and for social, situations, for social situations to arise so quickly that even if you're intercepting everything, even if you know who everyone is, that the situation moves too fast 
to do anything about it. By the time that you've followed all the tendrils and trails of the different activists, it's too late. But they're getting better and better at this, and they're starting to automate this technology. Um, companies working for German intelligence, even two years ago, are selling um, systems where they go, oh, if this person is on his mobile phone, he's in this location, because all the mobile phones are tracked, that's the best way to describe a mobile phone. It is a, a tracking device that also like makes a GPS. calls. It's a tracking device that also makes calls. This is how it's described in the intelligence community. So if this person happens to be in proximity to a person that has come from another country, not, you know, just general rules, uh, then automatically um, issue a dispatch and send someone there and correlate that to the email and so on. This is all being automated now. It is not about an individual person being targeted. It is automated. They look for patterns. The um, US military in its drone strikes uh, in Yemen now is speaking about, and um, Obama is wanting to authorize, and it probably has gone through, um, this notion of signature strikes, which is when they're assassinating someone with a drone, um, they don't have to know who they are. It's just sort of statistically, if they sort of went here and went there, then you should be there. Then they should be killed, you know, just because statistically they might be a bad guy, according to according to their interpretation. So that's really quite dark, really very dark. And uh, as far as I see, the only way to stop this um, avalanche of pending transnational totalitarianism, because that's what it is. When there is total surveillance, that is part of total totalitarianism, because it's total. Everyone is under this. So the, how can we stop that world rushing forward? If we look at the legislation that is passing through the United States, if we look at the attacks on us, if we look at the, the, the involvement of all the banks in trying to attack us um, outside the law, um, where is all this heading? Where's all that going? The people being detained without charge in the UK here for eight years. Your case. I've been detained um, for 600 days without charge. But there's people being eight years in prison detained without charge. More severe than my case. Where's all that going? I mean, just look at the trajectory of where it's going. And where's it going? That's going into some sort of, at least in the West, but possibly in other countries as well, a very, very strong centralized transnational state. It's not going to be the UK or US this happens to, no, because of the, the way um, the equipment is flowing, the way it's flowing socially, the linking up of all the um, intelligence apparatuses, military apparatuses, uh, the social elites of these various countries. It's a transnational phenomenon. It's a Western phenomenon. It's not about uh, simply the United States. It's bigger than the United States. That's moving to a very, very dark place. Um, so what can we do to prevent that? Regional alternative power blocks is the first thing. So Latin America getting together and trying to combat that sort of surveillance. Perhaps the, the Latin Americans can... Um, in their big communications links to Europe and big communications links to Asia, um, they can start encrypting it all as it passes through the United States. I mean, it's just a, a just a start. But to, to, to also make it so that the, the impact of this bulk spying on Latin America is reduced. Okay, so you know everything that you're doing, we're doing, uh, but that doesn't mean you can stop it because the, the strength, um, the the brotherhood of Latin America is strong enough uh, to resist that. Um, as, as individuals, um, I, it's quite hard now to, to resist this sort of thing. Um, you have to be really a, a, a cryptographer or a security expert. It's really quite hard. Uh, it, but perhaps there can be investment. You know, perhaps there can be investment in, in alternatives to Facebook all that information is collected and held in the United States. So it's almost like something perverse, if you want, that for, for the, the official line is we are promoting or we are living in uh, states that are democratic. We're talking about some Western countries, when in reality they're practicing it's completely exactly perverse. the opposite. It's completely perverse. I mean, it's, it's, it's in such 
runaway accelerating decay, the rule of law in the West. And we, we saw this with Guantanamo Bay. That's where at first the tension was out trial in Guantanamo Bay. I mean, you know, we now have a case that I worked on, the Omar Khadr case. Young man, 15 years old, detained from Afghanistan. Um, he has been kept in Guantanamo for 10 years now. He's gone from being a boy to be a man in Guantanamo. The only life he knows now is Guantanamo. Uh, over 80 people there are cleared for release. Even the US government says uh, that they were never terrorists. Uh, it's still there after, uh, uh, after years. Um, the most grievous offence against the rule of law to deliberately, intentionally order the murder of your own citizens outside of any judicial process where there's no possibility to review. Um, some of my lawyers tried to take a case against uh, what they believed was a, an appending um, drone strike on Awaki, um, a, a priest in Yemen, an American uh, who had moved to Yemen and become, a, and become a, an imam. They were prevented from doing so. They were prevented from doing so because the laws in the United States are now that that would be considered material support for terrorism. To take, a, to take a lawsuit to prevent someone from being assassinated would be material support for terrorism. They introduced this, um, they have introduced the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act in the United States. If you listen to Congress, uh, and a guy by the name of Peter T. King, a congress congressman, he says that that act would help the US government uh, detain me offshore, me personally, offshore, imprisoned without charge, like in Guantanamo. Okay. Um, uh, they will do that even to their own citizens now with this act. Permanent detention without charge by the military. So very scary. Yeah, so it, it's just in total decay. The, the, um, the rights of people to, if they're in a court case, some, something that... Um, uh, actually, I, I tell you a very, very ironic situation. So, the National Security Agency was spying not just on um, Latin American traffic flowing through the United States, but also domestically within the United States. It was bulk spying on traffic. And that has been discovered. Some of the machines in San Francisco were unveiled. Uh, there were some whistleblowers that came forward, like Mark Klein from AT&T came forward. So people took a class action suit in the United States saying, we were all spied on um, illegally, outside the law. And therefore, we want to sue the government and sue these uh, telecommunications companies for doing it. The judge ruled that they had no standing, you know, that, um, uh, that they shouldn't be recognized as someone who was able to sue. Why? Because he said, this happened to everyone. This crime happened to everyone. You're not special. Therefore, there's no case. Therefore, there's no case. So if you want to go and rob someone, you want to go and murder someone, just do it to everyone. In that case, there's no... And then there's no case. 